Hey, welcome back to the internet. I am in the middle of installing this deck here. Um, it's Ultra Deck from Menards. It's the Triumph series. And uh, I got a miter this post here all the way around it as we're doing kind of like a double 45 uh, sort of thing where we go like that, like that, mix into a 90. And I got this post here because we're going to have a swing and I'd like to miter it similar to this one here, which I did earlier. Uh, I'll probably put some uh, some type of trim here to help with that gap, but I gotta have the gap because of the way the T clips work on this. Uh, let me demonstrate. Here's your typical T clip. This goes in at an angle, this screw here, and you have a towards deck. Make sure that you place that towards the board that you're securing. And that goes inside of this little notch here. Like that. And the next one will go in. It's got these little teeth here that help bite into the PVC. But uh, anyway, we need a miter around this. And we need to do it in such a way that when we go to place our board in here, uh, we're gonna have to slide it underneath that and pound it into place. We could go like this and have two boards and adjust them because it's pretty darn close. And that's what we'd be left with if we did it that way. I think what we're going to try to do is cut this into one solid piece and try to leave this connected. Uh, there's not a lot of material there so it might break on us. Alright, here's what we're going to need. Some calipers, machinist square, a regular square. We'll have to use a jigsaw to cut it out. Okay, so here's the plan. We know we've uh, carefully measured the gap here. Uh, 3 sixteenths, or 2 sixteenths, or 1 eighth, and we know that this here is about 3 sixteenths to get it seated underneath, uh, so we're going to need to be 5 sixteenths away from here. So, with that in mind, we place our square in the slot here of the second board, and we move this in until we come into contact. Then uh, we look at our ruler here, And we are at about five and an eighth. Uh, in order to get the gap we need, we're going to pull it back one, two, three, four, five sixteenths of an inch. We've lined up our, our new board on top. Just going to clamp it in place real quick. Okay, that's the gap we need there. All right, so here's the gap we need there, right? Obviously, we can't set our scribes to that. We need this gap plus a board width. So if we move from here back to here that should be the exact measurement we want so now we set our scribes from this tip here to the edge of this here you have two options now you can with your with the scriber set to the proper distance try to keep you have to keep them uh, this angle exactly the same as you go this way and you can try to mark your board with your scribes like that and like this but I find that because because I have I've made my post roughly 45 already uh, to this board on both sides what I'm going to end up doing is just placing uh, my square here and going like that. And there's my mark. Same with the other side. There's my mark. Alright, just a quick sanity check, make sure. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now we need to cut this out. Okay, so we got our jigsaw. Uh, so what we're going to end up doing is flipping this upside down and cutting this way. So that way as this tooth uh, comes down on the cutting action, it should tear out on the bottom and not on the top where that we can see. And we're just going to follow that this way, follow that this way. And uh, we should probably support this end because I think this is probably going to break off. So we'll go about to here and about to here and then finish this off with this supported by something else, I think. 
So here we go. Okay, so we've gone ahead and got it roughly in place, and we have put a very slight mark here with a chisel where we want to cut it straight across. And to do that, since this is kind of awkward to get to the table saw, we're going to just slide it over to the edge there, and let, it, let it hang over, and then we're going to use our circular saw with our bright green triangle square, nah, and uh, cut it off. We have our mark here, we have our square, we line that up, hold it, bring it in our saw. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that cut. Nice and square. Let's finish this install. So, when installing these, make sure you have towards decking facing, well, towards the decking, like that. Don't go too tight with it, don't get carried away. And there's our miter. Looking pretty darn sharp, if I do say so myself. I mean, it's not, it's not like I've ever done this before. It would have been nice if we could have put a clip in here. Um, I just didn't see how we were going to get it to lock in. But I think that there's enough material here uh, that with these, this additional clamping we should be fine. When you put this in, you want it tight up against. Uh, otherwise, if you leave it out like that, like it was, uh, you'll progressively, error after error, have like the whole thing go weeble wobbly on you. So when you put it in, just pay close attention to push on this. Good firm pressure. See how it got up and away from me there? Don't go too tight. There we go. Minimal gap. Nice and tight. Just flush. Uh, we've just brought this bottom edge here into contact with the wood. We didn't go too far down and deform this ledge where our next board goes in. So that's roughly how it goes. So when I bring this next board in, it's going to end up being right about here. And I wouldn't be able to put one of these T-clamps in that would tie into this very well. So I've been kind of notching so that this won't actually connect, catch on there. So I've been using my chisel here to kind of notch out the end. And now it'll catch in the groove underneath here on this one, like so. But I don't have any room to actually screw that into anything. Nip the tip here so we can screw into something. Do you have to do this? No, nah, probably not. But I feel a little better when I do it. That gives me a moment to take a break. It is hot out here. Whew. Okay. There we go. Okay, so what we've done is ensured that this end won't come up on us over time and catch your toes. 
So yeah, then our next one will go on here with a gap. And then this will cut a notch in this one as well. That'll go there and hold that end down. And you just all the way down. It takes some time, but by doing it this way, by doing this herringbone pattern, I don't have to miter the end. I thought about just going all the way 45 on the deck, uh, you know, choosing one direction and 45 all the way across. Problem is, is a 14 foot deck, so you have to get like 16 foot boards to get across the diagonal. Uh, and those are more expensive per board foot because uh, at some point I guess the shipping costs and the, the storage costs of longer boards is more expensive. Uh, I'm not sure why. It seems like they got these things in like 20 foot lengths and they just cut them down when you order 12 foot. But regardless, the 12 foot was the best deal. So we were able to get 12 foot boards for the majority and then a couple 8 footers. Uh, and we were able to get it on our 8x4 trailer and get it here sooner. So. That's that. So I hope these uh, tips and tricks, if you want to call it that, have been helpful. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, subscribe. The heat's getting to me. All right, I'll see you later, folks. Take care.